What's going on everybody? My name is Ian. I'm a freelance digital sculptor and toy maker and today I'm going to show you how you can set scale and measure fairly accurately in ZBrush. So let's do it. So today we're going to be talking about scale and measurements and how to do that accurately within ZBrush and it's a fairly simple process so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. First we're going to set the scaling and then we're going to go ahead and set the uh, and then I'm going to show you how to actually measure once the scale is set. What is important to note here is that scaling is actually subtool dependent, meaning that you want to select a subtool that is easy to understand what kind of scaling principle you have. And it'll make sense what I, once I get into it. So the first thing we want to do is actually pick a subtool that would make sense. And for me, it's always a cube. So we're going to go ahead and go to insert and we're going to go ahead and pick a 3D cube. Now, as you can see here that the cube is fairly large. But what we want to do is kind of have an idea that this cube is a certain size. And for me, an inch works universally across the board. Uh, and I usually use it in a uh, metric system. So 25.4 millimeter is usually what I tend to set my cubes to. But as we're taking a look at this, we could see here that the cube is about the same size as my job of the hut here. Well, we don't want it that I at least want this to be about four inches tall. So the very first thing we need to do is actually grab our gizmo and let's scale this down to a size that we are going to like. And we're going to move it off to the side here just so you can see. And what I do is I size this, the cube first before setting the scale. This way I'll already have an idea of what that's going to be. So I have my cube here. I'm going to go ahead and hit this little pin button right here, which means that anytime I move my gizmo, it's going to go ahead and snap back to that one location. And I'm going to control Z that. And the reason why I'm going to do this is actually I'm going to hold control and drag a copy of this cube up and stack it fairly on top of each other. But then when I let go, that gizmo snaps back. Then I'm going to press one a couple times until I have about four cubes here. I'm going to go ahead and clear that mask, uncheck that little pin and reset this uh, gizmo to the center. And then I'm going to just go ahead and scale this up so that it is roughly about the same size as my job of the hut here. Now you don't have to get super accurate unless you want to, but this is a really good way to just kind of set yourself up for success. From here, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the polyframes and I'm quickly gonna go ahead and I have a shortcut for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto groups and then I'm gonna select the one cube that I want and delete hidden. So really I only use those other cubes to kind of get an idea of how tall this thing will be. From here, we now get a chance to actually set the scale. So to do so, what we're gonna do is come up to Z plugin and we're gonna go down to scale master and we're gonna hit set, set scene scale. By doing this, you're gonna get a bunch of options. I recommend choosing the millimeter and don't worry about what this says right now. All you need to worry about is what uh, measurement system you're gonna be using. For 3D printing and for most 3D programs, the metric system is by far the most commonly used. So we're gonna go ahead and pick the millimeter one. So we're gonna pick 0 0.50 millimeters. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and scale our cube to one inch. So we're gonna go back to Z plugin. We're now going to take a look at these sliders right here. And if we zoom in, you can see that we have three axes that we can work off of. We're gonna go ahead and pick one of them. It doesn't really matter. And we're gonna type 25.4 and hit enter. 25.4 millimeters is equal to one inch, just in case you were wondering. From here, we're gonna go ahead and there's a button right here called resize sub tool. We're gonna go ahead and click that. Now you're more than likely gonna get this error message. This error message is common and I just ignore it because it doesn't actually really affect anything. But from here, just go ahead and hit okay. And we're gonna watch our entire sub tool just rescale. Now that it is done, we can see here that we have a cube and Jabba the Hutt, and they look fairly identical, but they are resized. So now what we need to do is confirm that this cube is 25.4 millimeter. And to do so, we're just gonna come up to Z plugin, hit uh, set scene scale once more, and now you can see that our options have changed and we have 25.4 millimeters right here. So we can go ahead and click that, and now our cube is set to that millimeter standard. So now that we have the whole scene set, what we could do is actually pull some measurements from our subtools so that we can ensure that the model can either be A, 3D printed or B, moved over into another program that we may need to use those measurements later. So because 
setting your scene scale is subtool dependent. What we want to do is uh, basically grab the subtool we want to measure before using the measurement method of using transpose tool or even using a 3D print hub. And I'll show you in a second. So the way I recommend you measure a subtool so that you can ensure that it is the size that you would like it to be, what I recommend is you come and you grab that subtool over here in the subtool palette, come up to Z plugin, and come to 3D print hub. From here, we're gonna go ahead and click update size ratios. By doing so, you'll be presented two options, either inches over millimeters or millimeters over inches. However you decided to set your standard, in our case it's millimeters, Stick with that. It will save you a lot of problems uh, in the long run. If you choose to change this, I recommend changing this in Scale Master. But for tutorial purposes, we're going to go ahead and keep it the same. And also, too, not to confuse anybody, but we'll keep it the same. So we're looking at the millimeter option, which is 152.08 by 102.45 by 89.74 millimeters. Now, if you're confused by this, this is just giving you the height, the width, and the depth or the X, Y, and Z axis measurements. So that way we know. We're gonna go ahead and click the millimeter one, and now we have our information. The other way you can measure within ZBrush after you've set your scene scale is using the transpose tool, which is a very powerful tool. So what we could do is we can confirm our cube by selecting the cube by hitting Alt and Tap, or just coming in the sub tool method and just clicking it. And then we can hit W on the keyboard and if you have the gizmo, just click Y, and that will change it to the transpose tool. And if you hit Y again, it'll change it back and forth. So we're gonna click Y till we have the transpose tool, which is this little guy right here. We're gonna zoom all the way in on the cube. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click a point. As we start to drag, hold Shift. This will allow you to draw uh, to drag a straight line. And we're gonna go to another point on that model, and we're gonna go ahead and let go. And right up here at the top, we zoom in, it'll say 25.3989 millimeters. So that's a fairly accurate reading within ZBrush so that you can actually see that, yep, that's about 25.4 millimeters, give or take, that's an inch. Very, very accurate. And we can do this with every subtool. We can do this with the job of the hut. We can just, if we wanna know how tall he is, we can actually go ahead and zoom in, grab our, our uh, transpose, drag, hold shift, bring it up to the top. And you can see it dragged a straight line by holding shift and right up here at the top, it tells us it's about 101.7967 uh, millimeters. So the only flaw with this transpose method is that it is dependent on how far you drag it out. So you can overshoot or undershoot the model, so just make sure that whatever you're measuring, you can actually really get in there and get two clear points uh, of measurement. What I love to use this method for is wall thickness or making sure there's enough space in between my key cuts. So like, for example, if I wanted to measure the wall thickness of his finger, I can just come on in here, drag, hold shift, get to the other side, and his finger is about 2.2 millimeter so this will make sure that it's printable since you want a wall thickness of at least 0.2 millimeters. So that's that's thick enough. But that's how you can actually use the transpose tool to measure. Or if you want a overall measurement reading, you can just come up here to 3D Print Hub and hit the update size ratio for the overall reading. Okay, everybody, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. Hopefully it was informative. And if it was, please give it a like, thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Also, too, if you guys do things a little bit different, I would differently. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. So comment those down in the comment section down below. And if you guys are interested in how I sculpted the job of the hut that was featured in today's video, go ahead to my main channel and or click this link right here. And that'll take you to the time lapse. Um, I did it within three hours in a little sculpt off challenge over at Spicer's Dojo. Uh, he's a great artist and I love hanging out with him. And so it was fun to do that over on his discord. So anyway, guys, that is it. And I will talk to you all later. Have a great one. Bye.